Greetings and welcome to the third episode of PHS Physics SOS. Today I'll be going over Chapter 2, Part 3, which covers free fall motion. Uh, again, I would like to encourage all of you to try all the homework first before watching these videos. And uh, if you get stuck on a problem, come and search through the video for that specific problem. Uh, and in the description will be uh, links to the time in the video at which each problem starts, so you can just look at the problems you need help on. The first problem is problem 36, and it says a ball is thrown vertically upward. And part A asks, what happens to the ball's velocity while the ball is in the air? Well, the velocity starts out, uh, it starts out uh, with a large magnitude in the positive direction, and a smaller magnitude in the positive direction and then very small magnitude in the positive direction and it stops and then the opposite happens small negative bigger negative bigger negative velocity now part b asks uh, what is the velocity when it reaches its maximum altitude now whenever you throw something up and then it comes back down it's always going to stop and have zero velocity at the well it'll stop instantaneously and have zero velocity at the top of its trajectory so the answer to part B is uh, the velocity at the top equals zero. Now part C asks, what is the acceleration when it reaches its maximum altitude? And the uh, not just at its maximum altitude, but for the entire duration of the uh, ball's motion, it's going to have an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which is equal to gravity. So it's just the acceleration due to gravity. Part D asks, what is the acceleration just before it hits the ground? And it's the same as Part C, it's just the acceleration due to gravity, because during free fall motion, uh, it is constantly accelerated motion, so the motion is all, uh, so the acceleration is always the same value, and that value in this case is going to be uh, gravity. So again, gravity. Now part E asks, does the acceleration increase, decrease, or remain constant? And like I just said, given that it's uniformly accelerated motion, uniform meaning constant or not changing, uh, the acceleration does not change, so it remains constant. The next question is question 38 which reads, a juggler throws a bowling pin into the air with an initial velocity vi, or v initial. Another juggler drops a pin at the same instant. Compare the accelerations of the two pins while they are in the air. Now, um, this is another kind of a trick question because since they're both, uh, since both pins are experiencing free fall, granted one has an initial velocity that's going up, and because it was thrown up, and the other, uh, so we'll call this pin one. And it's initial velocity going upwards. And the other pin two is just drops, so it has, uh, so it starts out with zero velocity and starts moving downwards. Granted, they're moving in different directions. Uh, pin one is going upwards, and pin two is pin two is going downwards. They still have the same acceleration, which is just gravity which is I guess it doesn't ask for the acceleration it just wants you to say that the accelerations are equal so a of pin 1 is equal to a of pin 2 the next question question 40 reads worker drops a wrench from the top of a towel at 80.0 meters tall with what velocity does the wrench strike the ground? So, call this our tower, and this is going to be 80 meters, 80.0 meters. And he drops a wrench, so we have our wrench, and it's going to fall. So, and it says it's dropped. So when something is dropped, that means it's not thrown downwards, it just means it's let go. So that means its initial velocity equals zero. And that's something you have to know. When it's dropped, that means initial velocity is zero. So to find the final velocity, okay, so we know we know our change in y, we know our initial velocity, and it wants our final velocity. 
but we also have one more variable since this is free fall. We know that the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So given all this, we want our time out equation, which is v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a. And normally we'd use delta x, but in this case we're going to use delta y because delta x is normally like a back and forth or forward and backwards position. Delta y is used for up and down positions. Um, but it's really not a big deal. It's just uh, it's just what's used. So for v final squared equals v initial squared plus oh wait, so this should be a delta y. Um, plus 2 times negative 9.8 and the negative sign is important, the negative sign is very important um, and our delta y which is going to be y final minus y initial and this gets a little tricky because the, the delta y is actually negative because it starts out at y equals 80 and goes to y equals 0. So the change in y is negative 80 going from 80 to 0 because final is 0 and initial is 80. So we get v final squared equals 784 and then we get and then we square root both sides and we get v final equals 28 meters per second. Next question is question 41 and it reads, a physics student throws a softball straight up into the air. The ball was in the air for a total of 3.56 seconds before it was caught in its original position. So we have our student throwing a ball upwards and then downwards and it gets caught here. So, and the time for it to go through this whole arc was 3.56 seconds. Now, part A asks, what is the initial velocity of the ball? So, the initial is right here, and that's when it's thrown. Um, but there's another thing you should know about free fall motion. Uh, it's just something that's a characteristic of it that you need to uh, you need to have, I guess, memorized or uh, understand conceptually, is that the velocity here is going to be the opposite of the velocity here. For example, if I throw a ball up, or if I throw something up with a velocity of four meters per second it's going to come back down with a velocity of negative 4 meters per second. And the sign just means it's going in the opposite direction, um, the negative sign. So in this case, v initial is going to be negative v final, or in every case for free fall motion. Granted, your initial and final velocity are on the same plane. So like the velocity here is the negative of the velocity here, and the velocity here is the opposite of the velocity here, etc., etc. Um, so for this problem, we're going to set v final equals v initial plus a t, and um, v final, and since we know v initial is equal to negative v final, we can substitute it in plus negative 9.8 times 2.56 seconds. So then we get negative 2, oh no, sorry, 2 v final equals negative 34.9. And then divide that by 2, we get v final equals negative 17.4 meters per second. However, it was asking the initial velocity so, uh, and v initial equals negative v final, so, I mean, I guess we could have done this plugging in this for v initial, or no, sorry, plugging in negative v initial for v final and solve for v initial instead of v final. Uh, basically what I'm saying is you could have plugged either of these in for either one of these, 
and solved it for either V final or V initial. But uh, since since they're just the opposite of each other, it really doesn't matter. So put this back in here, and we get the initial equals 17.4 meters per second. I'm doing this sideways, aren't I? I apologize. So that's our answer to part A. Now, part B, let's cut this off a little bit. Part B asks, how high did it rise? So now we want our, we want to know our delta y. So, v final. Oh, and an important thing to note here is we're going to, okay, so we're going to use this equation, the time out equation. 2a delta y. However, for this part of the problem, we're setting our initial velocity to the same as it was here, but our final velocity, uh, since we want to know we want to know the height, which is up here. We have to set our final velocity to up here. So this is going to be our V final for part B. Um, I guess you can't quite see that, can you? Okay. That's going to be our V final for part B. Um, so, and that's going to be zero because it's the top. Um, and the, yeah, so we plug everything in. We know V final equals zero. We know our V initial is 17.4. We just calculated that. Uh, twice our acceleration is 2 times negative 9.8 times delta y. And I'm running out of room here. So we have negative 17.4 squared uh, equals negative 19.6 delta y. Um, Divide those out, or multiply this out first. It's about negative 304. And then divide by negative 19.6. Plug it into your calculator to get your delta y, which is going to be 15.5 meters. So that's your answer to part B. Yeah, how high did it rise? Question 43 reads, a small sandbag is dropped from rest from a hovering hot air balloon. After and part A reads, after 2.0 seconds, what is the velocity of the sandbag? So we're just going to use uh, the final equals the initial plus a t. Um, and we're looking for our v final. Um, and since it's dropped, we know our v initial is zero. Our acceleration is just the acceleration due to gravity. And it gives us our time, which is two seconds. And I guess if you want to, we can draw a picture. So we have a hot air balloon. Give it a star. That's the worst star anyone's ever seen. Whatever. It's a star. Uh, yeah, that's a really bad star. <laughs> so they're dropping a sandbag, and they want to know how far it goes in two seconds. Looks like a tw that looks like a twenty-five, but it's two seconds. And then we just plug this back in. V final, or no, I'm sorry, it wants to know the velocity down here, not how far it's going. That's the next part. So V final is negative 16, no, sorry, dyslexic, negative 19.6 meters per second. Uh, the next part, part B, asks, after two seconds, how far below the hot air balloon is the sandbag? Uh, so for this, we're going to use um, delta Y equals negative, or sorry, positive one-half a t squared. Um, so our delta y is going to be equal to one-half times our acceleration, which is just acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.8, um, times our time squared, which is going to be two squared, which is four. Um, and we multiply this by back out, we get, I'm sorry, we multiply this all out, and we get negative 19.6 meters. However, it's asking, go back and read the problem and ask, uh, 
after two seconds, how far below the hot air balloon is the sandbag. So it's not asking, um, it's not asking what's its displacement. It's asking for how far below it is. So it's not asking for a negative number, but that's just kind of semantics. So it's 19.6 meters below the hot air balloon. Um, now, something to note. These turned out to be the same answer. That's usually not going to happen. And the reason is, is because the velocity is a linear equation, a linear relationship. It's just acceleration times time. But position or change in y or change in x or whatever it happens to be is a, uh, is a quadratic relationship. In other words, there's a t squared. Um, it just happens to work out at t equals 2 that these be, are the same answer when there's a 1 half out in front. Um, at any other value, they're not going to be the same, so never assume they are because... 99% of the time you're going to be wrong. All right, now for the big one, question 47. Question 47 reads, a ball is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 25 meters per second from a height of 2 meters. So, draw a person throwing a ball. And, however, something to note in this problem is they actually give us the height off the ground, which is... Two meters with our ball, and we have our initial velocity, which is 25 meters per second upward, in other words, in a positive direction. So part A asks, how high does the ball rise? So it's asking for delta y, um, and we have, um, oh, and it's asking for delta y at the peak which at the peak, uh, an important thing to note is that our the final is going to be zero. So we can just use our timeout equation. So the final squared is zero equals the initial squared, which is uh, 625. Um, plus 2a delta y, so t plus 2 times 9.8, negative, sorry, 9.8 delta y. Um, so we have negative 625 equals negative 19.6 delta y, and then we divide it out, and we get... We get 31.9 meters. Most delta y. And so that's how high the ball rose from here to here. Um, now, part B asked, how long does it take the ball to reach its highest point? Uh, so now that we have um, initial velocity, final velocity, and of course we have our acceleration. Well, actually, we didn't even need to do this part. We could do part B before we did part A. Uh, so we can just use v final equals v initial plus a t. So v final is zero. Uh, v initial is 25, and our acceleration is negative 9.8, and we're looking for time. So we subtract 25 over, and we get, and we divide. And you can't really see that very well anymore. Sorry. Okay. Um, so we get our time, which is going to be 2.55 seconds. Part C asks, how long does the ball take to hit the ground after it reaches its highest point? Now, part C is tricky, and I'll tell you why. I'm going to get this table. Part C is tricky because... If you remember correctly, the ball initially started two meters off the ground, but it wants to know how long it takes to hit the ground, which is two meters below its starting point. Um, so we just found out how high it takes to reach its uh, its peak, 2.55 seconds. So you'd be inclined to think that for it to get back down, it's going to take twice that long. But uh... oh, sorry. Uh, it's asking how long it takes to get from the highest point to the ground. So you'd be inclined to think that it's the same as the time it took to get up. 
but since there's an extra two meters, the time is going to be a little different. So we actually have to solve for two things. Um, first, we have to solve for the final velocity when it hits the ground, and then we have to use that final velocity to find the time um, to find the time when it hits the ground. So to find our final velocity, we're going to go b final squared equals the initial squared plus 2a delta y. Except for this part of the problem, let me redraw it real quick. And remember, this is another 2 meters, this distance from where it was thrown to where it's going to land. Um, so for this part of the problem, our initial velocity is up here, and our fun oh, I'm sorry, you can't see that, sorry. Uh, our initial velocity is up here, and our final velocity is down here. Because we're looking for the delta y between these two points. So our final velocity squared equals our initial velocity squared, which is 0, minus twice our, or plus twice our acceleration, which is negative 19.6 times delta y, and we do know delta y, because we know the delta y from here to here. We calculated it back here, and it is 31.9 meters. And we know that, sorry, we know that the difference between this and this is, or the difference between here and here is 2 meters. So we know that, we know that uh, this whole delta y over here is going to be equal to this plus 2, which is 33.9 meters, and plug that back in here. And then when we, oh, sorry, uh, it's actually negative 33.9 meters, because we've defined this direction upwards as our positive direction, and this direction downwards as our negative direction. And since it's starting up high, and ending up low, so our initial is up here and our final is up here, our initial position and our final position go from high to low, uh, so the change in y is going to be a negative number. So we get b final squared equals, hang on, what does that equal? 19.6 times 33.9 equals 664, and if we take the square root of that, we're going to get our final velocity at the bottom once it hits the ground, um, which is going to be equal to, um, oh, it's going to be equal, if you just take the square root of this, you're going to get a positive number. Um, however, we have to go back and look at our problem and realize that while the final velocity, while this is the right value, this is actually not the right velocity. It's the right magnitude, but not the right direction. Because our final velocity is downwards. It's pounding into the ground. So, it needs to be negative. And the reason we didn't find this out from our math was because this is a squared number. If we squared this number, you're going to get a positive number. So, uh, like, this, like, back from algebra, you remember that if you take say negative 4 and positive 4 and square it, they're both going to equal 16. And the square root of 16 can actually equal plus or minus 4. But normally we just ignore the negative part, uh, especially in science classes, and just take the positive number. But in this instance, we're going to have to go back and look at our problem to find out if it's positive or negative. And in this case, it's negative, because we know in a free fall problem at the end, uh, the velocity is going to be downwards because it's hurtling back towards Earth. It's going down. So, hence our final velocity is negative. But, the problem is asking how long does the ball take to hit the ground? And, to calculate how long it takes, uh, we need to use another equation which has time in it. So we take negative 25.78 equals our initial velocity up here, which is 0, uh, uh, minus 9.8 time. And if we divide those out, we will get our time, which is 2.63 seconds. And that's the time it took the ball to fall from here down to here. And if you'll remember from earlier in the problem, 
from part B when it asks how long it took to go from here to here. 2.55 is actually uh, a little less than how long it took from here to here, 2.63, um, because of these extra two meters, and that should make sense. So if you go and if you if you go and compare this answer, like say on a test, if you have a problem like this, and if you go and compare your second answer where it had to fall longer to it, your first answer where it was a shorter distance with the same acceleration, um, this one should be greater because it's going a greater distance. So that's just a little sanity check to make sure your answer makes sense. And then part D asks, what is the velocity when the uh, what is the ball's velocity when it returns to the level from which it started? Now the level from which it started was uh, two meters off the ground. And again, this is this is kind of uh, I don't want to say trick question, but I mean you just did three really hard uh, uh, you just did a really hard part, and now it's throwing you another part, but it's actually really easy. Um, it's just the concept that your velocity here is just the opposite of the velocity here because it's going down here, going up here. I discussed that in a previous problem. Uh, so this is just going to be the opposite of the initial velocity given in the problem, which is 25 meters per second. So part D is going to be um, is going to be negative the initial, which is going to be equal to negative 25.0 meters per second. Uh, thank you for watching this episode of BHS Physics SOS. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the YouTube comments below or in the Facebook group, for which I will have a link in the description, uh, or message me personally on Facebook, um, and I can help you one-on-one uh, -on -one either on Facebook or on Skype. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful.